Welcome to our weekly program, um, Politics and Beyond. I'm Rajathareti Achkyo Aapnede Shamne Ajo Gurno Manno Bekti Ke Niyaj Aarshchi. Abong Ami Alpo Shomar Mudde Ona Ke Poriche Koree Dibo. But Ami Agi Aapnede Ka Se Khomar Chaya Nitchi Jaya Aachke Aamadheer Program Ta Mota Muti Aamra English Ae Koro Bo. Karan Aamadheer Shadhe Jini Aachen Tini Judio Kichu Bangla Bolte Paaren. Kintu Aamadheer Mona Haya Na Pura Shota Oni Bangla Te Korte Paaren. आमंदे शायद आज के आचन आमंदे गुन्नो एमपी एवं पॉपुलर लाइम हाउसेर वर्तमान एमपी जनाब जी जिम फिस पैट्रिक आमी आगे बोलते सी जहाँ आमंदे जहेतो इटा जिम आमंदे शायद आचन हम रा मोटा मोटी इंग्लिश ए प्रोग्राम टा करवो एवं फॉर दैट रीज़न आम गोने इंट्रोड्यूस हिम इन इंग्लिश टुडे वी हैव आर ऑनरेबल एम um, he has been a sitting council, uh, sitting MP since the creation of uh, the constituency of uh, Popular and Canning Town, which is now called Popular uh, and Limehouse. Jim, welcome to our show. My church, man. Thank you for coming in a short notice. I really appreciate you you're know, welcome. You're, you're, you're busy, man. <laughs> you're very busy these days, so I'm, 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 I appreciate that you made the time to come it's, over. Uh, it's less busy when the house is in recess. Oh, that's true, I get yes. more time to uh, do constituency events. So today I've been in Shadwell. I went to Myland uh, Stadium for a uh, sports day organised by the uh, Active Community Network and the ASDA Foundation. Uh, then I went to meet the chairman of the London Community Forum in Limehouse. Um, then I went to meet constituents in the Aberfell Day who had problems with antisocial behaviour, seeking a response from the police, and, and now I'm here. So at least I get to do things in the constituency <laughs> rather than having to be yes. at Westminster. Although I was in my office at 7 o'clock this morning and I uh, didn't get away from there until wow. about half 12. Wow. Well, thank you uh, for taking the time out and, and seeing us. Um, Jim, before I go into the main programme, Dorshok Mondali, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do the usual quiz and then we'll go into um, straight into the program. Uh, Jim, we usually do a quiz and last week the question was which year was Gaza occupied by Egypt? Do you know it? Yes, because you told me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is 1948 and, um, and we have uh, a possible winner among these. Uh, Jim, if you want to pick one out. The winner is uh, Sania Begum from East Ham. Okay, brilliant. Miss Sania Begum, we will surely um, send a gift to you. Well done, price. Sania. Our other Achker, a weaker J quiz, Shetoche, when was Hong Kong handed over to China? Was it a July 1997, June 2000? August 2005. Um, the screen to um, the question and the answer, uh, the possible answers, and also uh, the email address, which is um, pnb at uh, pnb uh, at channelieurope.tv. Apnaokane email um, Viewers, uh, today our program's uh, quiz is on Hong Kong. And the quiz is, when was Hong Kong handed over to China? As you would know, Hong Kong was a territory uh, of, British, uh, of the British government, and it has been handed over uh, quite some time ago. And I quite remember, I think um, at your early stage, you, you also remember when you just became um, an MP uh, during that kind of period. Um, I think Charles said it was the greatest Chinese takeaway. <laughs> 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 but. Um, I'll leave the answer uh, to, to, to the viewers and they can answer it through our email system. Um, Jim, on, on this segment what we do is we ask the guest about their political opinion. So what would be your political highlight or something that has caught your imagination and your heart and your head that you would like to discuss with us on political terms? 
Well, I think what would be interesting uh, would be whether or not any of your viewers um, have opinions about next year's general election, because that's okay. the next big political uh, milestone for the whole of the country. We've got the Scottish sure. referendum um, yeah. uh, next remind, month, which I know we're going to be... Is when, when the next election is? is well, the next election will be May the 7th next year, Okay. Uh, when we move to fixed term parliaments. Um, whereas previously the Prime Minister had the power to call an election yeah. when he or she uh, felt it appropriate, which always gave the government a huge advantage. Sure. One of the reforms of the coalition is that we move to five-year terms yeah. so that everybody the knows the solid, election yeah. will be in the first week or so of May every five years, unless, of course, the government resigned or there was a, a major constitutional crisis. So we know the election will be May the 7th next year. Um, it will be the next big political test. Everybody's trying to work out what's going to happen. Um, the opinion polls have been saying it will be a Labour government for three years now. Um, but also everybody knows that governments always close the gap um, near Just election up, time. Yeah. So the, the smart money says that it might be another hung parliament. Yeah. Um, but the coalition aren't very popular. Um, the economic strategy hasn't worked as well as George Osborne hoped it would. And the Lib Dems are struggling to raise their profile because everybody's blaming them for having surrendered many of their policies for the sake of power. Um, Ed Miliband has led the Labour government to say that we want more fairness in society and there's a, a raft of policies that we put forward um, in terms of fair rents, building homes, compulsory jobs guarantee, reducing the starting rate of, of income tax, mm -hmm. um, putting a freeze on energy prices, new policy last week on, on the railways. Um, Ed Miliband's clearly issuing a call to say the coalition's policies have not worked for everybody. It's not been a fair strategy. Giving tax breaks to millionaires whilst most ordinary people have felt a huge squeeze on their incomes for the past four years. And that doesn't look it's going to change by, by next year, which probably is why we have stayed ahead in the opinion polls. Um, the general election is a huge question for everybody. Um, and it looks as though it will be a straight runoff between Labour and Conservative. Um, how many votes the Lib Dems get will determine whether it's um, another hung parliament I and whether they will actually have the opportunity to negotiate. Sure, I think uh, the Lib Dems are pretty much in the water because since they have promised on the student fees and then they've got the battering of we've seen in the uh, by-elections and uh, um, you know the council elections and then in the EU they literally got one seat among the whole of yeah. possible whole England. Sure. You know, so uh, they are pretty much, you know, gone in the thin air kind but of thing. But what's interesting is they can't come they, back if they... When they're know. holding seats, they are very well dug in. Right. So whereas their vote may collapse around the rest of the sure. country, where they hold 55 parliamentary constituencies, sure. because of the personal vote, because of the work that yeah. those MPs have put sure. in, they may hold on to most of them, but they're still sure. expected to suffer losses. Sure. Let me come back on a on couple of things that you said. I mean, your your stats that you've given, that it, it looks really glory on, on the Labour front, that they might um, actually win, win the general election, be it a minor gov minority government or a majority government. Um, some say they, with the pollings that you've got, seven to ten po uh, points ahead, yeah. you might even have a majority. Um, but wouldn't it at the end of the day, at the doorstep, it would all matter about the economy of the country? Because um, I know you talked about uh, a little about that the, uh, the economic plan is not working. But if you look at all the leading economists, they're saying the economy uh, plan is perfectly fine. Um, uh, the IMF chief said uh, England is doing perfectly fine. As a more, more, matter of fact, they've retained the AAA ratings. Yep. And they're comparing to the rest of the Europe. Uh, England is, is doing much, much better. Even Alistair Darling yesterday in his debate was saying that, uh, you know, because it's England, because it's the Starling, Britain. that's why... Britain. Uh, Britain. Britain. Because, because <laughs> it's Britain, because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the Starling, that's why we have come back and yeah. we're doing much better. No, I, I, think the, that's, I, think it's, I think it's a fair comment that the British economy is doing better than all of our international competitors. And there are a whole number of reasons for that. One, we'll get more people in the country, therefore productivity is up. But the big question is, 
do people, ordinary people, feel that they're getting a benefit from the good performance of the British economy? And what most people say, and this is why I believe we have the lead that we've got in the opinion mm -hmm. polls and why we're holding on to it, is that most people have seen their earnings fall in the past four years. This is the first time in history that we're going from one election to another where the, the power of money in people's pockets will be less than it was when we left office in 2010. And remember, when we left office, the economy was growing. It was the strategy uh, determined by the coalition, which put us into recession, which kept us there for two years, which wasted all of that time. And yes, the economy is performing better. And what we want to see is not more tax cuts for millionaires, because the Conservatives haven't ruled that out. We want to see fairness in the economy. People's rich <laughs> Commuters are paying more for the welfares. And um, energy prices, which is one of the most basic commodities, sure. everybody is making everybody's paying much more for their energy, and sure. yet the big six energy companies are racking up billions of pounds worth of profits. Let's, that can't let's, be fair. let's just take that for 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 a minute, the energy uh, side of it. Uh, your leader said that he will cap the uh, uh, energy price. But soon after that, the big six just pushed up the rate, saying that, oh, no, if Labour comes in, they're going to freeze the rate. So we might as well just push it up. So they did. So sometimes, the, you know, it might be a sound bite, yeah. but does it really, did it really help for the, for the local person? Like, it, it hurt my pocket. It certainly hurt your pocket. Well, uh, it's, it's a very interesting question, because in reality, what you would have thought then was, the government should have done something to protect people against the energy companies hiking the prices on the basis of a soundbite from an opposition politician. We're not in government. We're not likely to be in government for at least another nine months if we get in. Sure. They could try and hike the prices then. Why do, it, why do it a year ago? And why does everybody have to pay prices? The government are now playing catch up because now the government are saying they're giving extra powers to the regulator to investigate the energy prices leveled by the six big companies. So why did they not do that a year ago? But the they're only doing it now because them. they're only doing it now because Labour has told them they got it wrong and they're having to play catch up. So your 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 party is now being the effective opposition, if I would say, which makes makes a difference. Now I'm, I'm going to touch on one more thing, and then I'm going to come on to another kind of politics. Okay. Um, you you talked about the millionaires. Uh, yeah. And the railway. The railway, you, we know in, in, in Labour time that it was uh, under the government, that it was a public uh, body, then it was privatised, then it was taken back, and then it was given back. So, taking it back again, do you think that that would be the right thing? And the other thing that I would like to um, kind of say is that the, the millionaires that you said, that the, uh, the government is paying out for the millionaires by tax, but this government, the coalition government, has also brought a lot of people out of poverty. They have pushed the threshold from uh, t up to 10,000, and their ambition is to go up to 12,000. So would you not say the poor people has now d literally don't have to pay tax up to 12,000? And I think that's a, been a good thing. And I'm not for a second saying that everything... So wouldn't you say they're, they're, the coalition, as much as they're uh, catering for the millionaires, they're also catering for the poor? Well, there's an element of that. Um, but the vast majority of working people are still worse off than they were in 2010. And I'm not saying that everything sure. the coalition have done is wrong. Um, yeah. That would be foolish. Um, because every government of any particular sure. colour um, will do some things that are right um, and will do some things that are wrong. We think, on balance, they've done more wrong than right. So what, what would terms you of have done if, well, because when you left the government, your Treasury Secretary, uh, Liam, wrote a, left a note saying that there's no money in the coffers. Yeah, that was a tough thing to do, so, wasn't it? So what would you would have done if there was no money in the coffers? Well, what we said that we would do um, which the government decided it would do, but after two years of flatlining, was that they made a huge announcement of £50 billion, pound, uh, I beg your pardon, £100 billion pounds investment in infrastructure. We said that should have been done in 2010 or 2011. They waited until 2013. And remember, half of that infrastructure, £50 billion, pounds, is going into HS2, one single railway, and I'm not convinced sure. by that either. So what we would have done would have been invested in infrastructure, 
way before they did. Okay. We would have got on the back of the economy which was growing in 2010 and we would have had to deal with a deficit. We would have had to have introduced some very severe cuts and serious cuts and we're saying we're going to have to do that next year if sure. we win the election. So we're not shying away from difficult questions. Okay. But you asked, well, about, I'll, I'll, you asked about the railways. Yep. The East Coast Main Line last year, as a nationalised railway line, made £350 million profit for the taxpayer. So what we're saying about the railways is, it doesn't all have to be private and it doesn't all have to be public, but there should be a competition for each franchise when it comes up. And the best bid for the taxpayer, if it's a private sector lead or a public sector lead, the taxpayer should get the best benefit from whichever franchise So you right. would support some kind of competition then? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish off on, on, this, on this bit, um, just saying that the HS2, do you not feel that if we have the HS2 and with the speed rail, that some of the um, uh, toughness on, on the inner city like London would relief it would it would be surrounded so people can actually come to work from the suburbs from those areas well, that's so the housing and the other areas now people try to stay within the inner cities yep. and within london boroughs yep. because of the job but yep. now uh, if it if, the, if they can commute within 25 30 minutes they can then live somewhere and then so the housing strategy would be re 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 relieved I think in uh, 20, two, years? Two, two things on that. One, I think you'll find that the ticket prices on HS2 will be much more expensive than the normal commuter lines. So I think that might put it outside the um, affordability sure. test for commuters. Secondly, the whole essence of HS2 and how it's been um, uh, sold is that it will rebalance the economy and take business out of London to the regions. Sure. Your suggestion is that we'll actually bring more people into London, which is a real potential. Yeah. And I think it may suck the life out of half of the south, of, from the Midlands sure. to the south of England. But it will also reduce uh, the cost of living if, if somebody lives in suburb and then able to, because then they won't have to pay an arm and a leg of rent. In, in, in the main city. Well, you've only got to look at what... Then we've got a caller. Let's take the caller and then we'll come right back to you. Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Hello caller. I think we missed the caller. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the, the question of um, house prices. You've only got to look at the impact that the Jubilee line has had on house prices in East London. The impact that Crossrail will have. But on these house are prices. in a London city. Uh, I mean, within the London borough city. Uh, within all the boroughs, but when you look at um, Tower Hamlets and then look at Newham and look at Barking and Dagenham, yeah. wherever there has been improvement in transport links, transport infrastructure, yeah. house prices have gone up because sure, the, the yeah. houses yeah. around those stations sure. always rise because they're more sure. desirable. No, people course, I, I think that's a good thing. But at the same time, um, would you not say that if if someone can live outside the London borough? and then commute into, into the city to work, the, wouldn't that relieve a lot of the pressure on the housing market? In, it, it, in, might in do. it might do. Um, I suspect it won't because London's growing at such a rate that there's going to be intense pressure on London house prices and in the surrounding commuter belt for at least 10, 20 years to come. Um, but equally, would you want to commute um, an hour, I two mean, hours every day? day? I mean, if I have, I've, I've got friends that do commute already, and um, but if I have, if I have a lesser um, uh, uh, cost on paying a mortgage or p getting a bigger house and pay bigger garden and paying less mortgage or less rent, I wouldn't mind paying the extra bit to come into the city and and working. Mind you, it's not ex it's not uh, that cheap either staying within the borough. You have to pay your rail tickets or bus fare or whatnot. And then on top of that, you're paying the inflationary uh, cost of rent or mortgage, mm -hmm. you know. And these houses are not cheap. The worst one is probably half a million at the moment in London. So if you can, you probably can get an acre, two acres, and what are, the living standard would be much better uh, just outside. And then you commute in, in and out. I, I know that two hours or, or an hour long journey is quite hard. But I think that will in eventually, in, in 15, 20 years time, when we see the cross rails running, that um, uh, some of the um, housing uh, market will, will relief out of the inner London and, and yeah, the garden the only, cities. The only thing, the only, cities that the only the thing which is going is to relieve the only thing that's going to relieve house prices and rocketing rents 
is building more building homes. More, yeah. um, and so far, each government has failed to do that. Sure. Ed Miliband is committing us to build 200,000 new homes in the five years of our, sure. uh, our government. But they have to open up the green belts then. And There'll be there'll be garden towns perhaps. Yeah. Uh, there are Nick five is, or four in yeah, the Yeah, Nick Clegg and the coalition are floating yeah. that idea. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be one of the big issues of the election campaign. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see who the public believe. Um, and so far, what they're saying is they're looking at the wage. I don't bracket, think they will be able to deliver it before the election. Sorry. I don't think they will be able to uh, deliver it before the election. Oh no, not at all. No, but, but people get a mandate. People will be yeah. looking at, at their wage packets and their salaries, and they'll be looking at the cost of living. Yeah. And they'll be, as you said it right early on, it's the economy which will determine the election. Sure. People will want some certainty that they're going to be better off than the next five years than they have been in this five We're years. We're going to go on a break, but before we go. Let me just quickly um, ask you this. Do you think, uh, I mean, we're, we're pretty much talking about the economy and the election. Yeah. Do you think uh, something like the Gaza and uh, Syria will also determine some of the election, electionary voting? There's no doubt that um, a number of people feel naturally very strongly over what's happening in Gaza. Um, I've hardly had any emails about what's happening in Syria, said, yeah. which, is a, which is really, yeah. Confusing. And you also put in a motion. Uh, which, is, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, interesting. Um, we're talking nine months away. A week is a long time in politics. Yeah. Whether that's still high up the, ag uh, the political agenda, whether it will make a difference to the way that some people will vote. Yeah. People will have to look at a whole raft of, of questions. Yeah. Employment, education, the National yeah. Health Service, housing, foreign policy, international aid. Yeah. Uh, Gaza will be very much part of that. It will be one of the issues that people will want to know about. But I, 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 I think my personal view is that that would not matter in the, in the local issues, uh, electing, for example, you or any councillors, because at the end of the day, it's, no. it's, it's, it's about the council tax, it's about my education, it's about my children going into the right place, uh, it's about my environment. So I, I remember a million men marched against um, Tony Blair to stop going to Iraq. He never stopped and he got re-elected. <laughs> so you, we really don't know that which way, at the end of the day, I think my personal view is that when it comes to the crunch, people will think that what can you do for me as an MP or an, as an elected member, be it councillor or MEP? Sure. Would you not agree on that? I think um, that's exactly the question that every person asks themselves before they go to vote. Um, what, am I, what am I going to get from this? Yeah. What's in it for me and my family? Sure. Um, that will be the determining factor. For a minority, for some people, for some people, Gaza will be the biggest question. Yeah. But I think that will be a small minority. The vast majority of people, it will be about housing, it'll be about jobs, it'll be education, it'll be the National Health Service, it will be about cost of living. Um, all of these huge questions, um, some people will be more interested in one than the other, yeah. but they will all have an, uh, a determining factor uh, for people in making their minds up as to which party they think best reflects how they feel sure. and what's going to benefit them and their family. If I may say this, that, you know, since the creation of uh, Popular Canning Town, which is now Popular Limehouse, you've been the, you've been the sole um, MP there, whereas Battle Green Bowl seen a few. Um, so are you the oak of, <laughs> of, of, uh, of Popular Limehouse? The old that man. No, that the oak the tree, old man of Popular the oak Limehouse. The tree yeah? that nobody can blow you down? No, you know? no, nobody's how, uh, nobody's. how how confident are you on this time time of the election? I'm never confident when it comes to elections. Okay. Every vote, every vote has to be fought for. Every vote has to be won. We'll we'll talk about it uh, in the in our next segment more about Ta Hamlets and yourself. Shri Dasha Pandili, apne ashun len Jim Fis Patrick astege. তার মতামত তার অভিমত যে নেক্সট ইলেকশনে কীরকমভাবে এটা গড়ে তুলবে এবং কিসের জন্য তাকে ভোট দেওয়া হবে কিসের জন্য মানুষ ইলেকটেড মেম্বারদেরকে ভোট দেবে আমরা একটা ছোট্ট ব্রেকে যাব এবং ব্রেক থেকে এসে আবার আপনার সাথে যোগাযোগ কথা বলবো